The horrors of Nazi concentration camps are well known, but women's experiences within these camps have been grossly overlooked. In this video, we will delve into the abuse suffered by women in Nazi concentration camps. We will examine abuse women were subjected to through the well-oiled machine that was the Nazi military and concentration camp brothels. We will also explore how women were used as prostitutes and forced into sexual servitude. Join us as we uncover the untold stories of the women who suffered at the hands of the Nazis. While the Nazi war machine was blitzing through Europe and North Africa, all eyes in the Allied nations were on black and white film reels depicting what battles were being won and lost in this survival war, as President Roosevelt named it. What the public in the Allied nations didn't see on their theater screens was the most significant collective act of survival in humankind's short history. By the end of the war, what would become millions of innocent civilians were fighting a daily battle for life in the brutal concentration and death camps dotted across Europe. Most of us know what happened in these camps, but few know the sexual depravity women endured in these barbed wire hells. Reinhard Heydrich is known as the architect of the Holocaust. Heydrich was the head of the Reich Security Main Office and presided over the Van C Conference in January 1942, which formalized preparations for the final solution to the Jewish question, a euphemism for the deportation and extermination of all Jews in German-occupied Europe. Many historians regard Heydrich as one of the darkest figures within the Nazi regime. When Adolf Hitler referred to him as the man with the iron heart among the Nazi monsters, we know for sure that he had no scruples or no empathy for the people he was trying to exterminate. What many people do not know is that Heydrich planned, ran and oversaw one of the most extensive sexual slavery operations ever seen until his assassination. The story of this industrial-scale sex slavery operation has two distinct parts. The semi-consensual German military brothels and the subsequent Nazi concentration camp brothels. On the 16th of March 1940, Heydrich's mandate to establish state-controlled prostitution went into effect. At the height of the Nazi prostitution operation in occupied Europe, close to 500 brothels were running at any given time. Generally, these brothels were brand new buildings, but they were occasionally created using existing brothels and numerous other structures. These facilities, which were often situated in seized hotels and guarded by the Wehrmacht, serviced traveling soldiers and those withdrawn from the fighting at the battlefront. The Nazis' motives for setting up military brothels were similar to those of the Imperial Japanese Army's mandate over state-run prostitution. If you have never heard of the Japanese comfort women of World War II, check out this channel's in-depth video on the subject. A high prevalence of venereal diseases among soldiers, such as gonorrhea and syphilis, was the initial impetus for setting up military brothels. As a result, military brothel prostitutes were routinely examined by physicians for STDs. In addition, the Nazis compelled their personnel to use condoms in brothels. Another factor was the prevalence of obsessive homophobia in the Nazi party's upper ranks. The Nazis believed that an absence of sexual activity with women would contribute to homosexuality in their fighting men. Visiting prostitutes would discourage the Nazi soldiers from becoming homosexual, according to top Nazi commandants. The Nazis also observed a correlation between their soldiers socializing with local women and the precision of enemy attacks. Paranoia about female agents was at an all-time high, and the most effective method to prevent military secrets from being divulged in the throes of passion was to regulate where men sought their pleasure. The military brothels were run with absolute German precision. They were meticulously planned, and records were kept of all brothel activities. The women in the military brothels began each day at 6 a.m., usually with a venereal disease screening. The women were examined up to three times per week. Between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., the women prepared for work. 
and had to service the visiting German soldiers and officers from 2 to 8.30 p.m. Some women in military brothels chose prostitution voluntarily in order to avoid concentration camps. However, the majority of women were coerced into prostitution. Nazis forced them to choose between sexual servitude and execution. By the end of 1940, the Germans had established an extensive network of military brothels throughout the occupied territories. However, finding consenting prostitutes started to become challenging. Their solution? Sexual slavery. How did they find these sex slaves? Teenage girls and women were frequently abducted from the streets of occupied cities in Eastern Europe during German military and police roundups. These women and girls were transported en masse to become prostitutes in the brothels. The Foreign Ministry of the Polish Government in Exile published a document on the 3rd of May 1941 detailing the mass abduction operations conducted in Polish cities to capture young women for sexual enslavement in German military-run brothels. Franz Marwick, a mission driver for the Swiss Red Cross, wrote in 1942 from Warsaw about what he had seen. Uniformed Germans gaze fixedly at women and girls between the ages of 15 and 25. One of the soldiers pulls out a pocket flashlight and shines it on one of the women straight into her eyes. The two women turn their pale faces to us, expressing wariness and resignation. This first one is about 30 years old. What is this old whore looking for around here? One of the three soldiers laughs. Bread, sir, asks the woman. A kick in the ass you get, not bread, answers the soldier. Owner of the flashlight directs the light again on the faces and bodies of the girls. The youngest is maybe 15 years old. They open her coat and start groping her with their lustful paws. This one is ideal for bed, he says. In the Soviet Union, German forces also kidnapped women for prostitution, according to one report by the International Military Tribunal. In the city of Smolensk, the German command opened a brothel for officers in one of the hotels into which hundreds of women and girls were driven. They were mercilessly dragged down the street by their arms and hair. Nazis would also enter drinking establishments and kidnap the most attractive women. Women feared walking the streets because they were sure to be abducted by the German police. The police would pack women onto trucks and transport them to unidentified locations from which they would never return. Women from concentration camps made up the second source of sex slavery victims. In 1942, the first camp brothel opened in Mannhausen, Gusen. After the 30th of June 1943, a brothel was constructed in Auschwitz and Buchenwald concentration camps. The camp brothels were typically constructed as dormitories, surrounded by barbed wire fences, with small individual chambers for each of up to 20 female captives, under the supervision of a female overseer. The women were often replaced due to exhaustion and illness and were murdered after the brothel had no use for them. No Jewish male inmates were allowed as patrons in these brothels. Taking complete control of the brothel, an SS member would connect the women with patrons according to race. There is evidence that in some brothels, women may have had tattoos reading Feldhor or Fieldhor on their chests. Occasionally, the SS persuaded women to work in brothels by promising them more humane treatment or a reduction in their indefinite sentence. The German soldiers using these brothels were indifferent to whether the prostitutes were Aryan or Semitic. What mattered was their physical attractiveness. The Nazis promoted the superiority of the Aryan race, but in the brothels, their ideology did not hold true. The Nazis abandoned their pure race claims regarding sex and said that having sex with a person of lower race in a brothel was not detrimental because it did not promote inner bonding. The sex slaves in the camp brothels consisted of Jews, Roma, African and Slavic women. What these women went through was hell on earth. Each woman was violated between 24 and 40 times daily. Their bodies could not endure such maltreatment for an extended period. Consequently, 
The women in these establishments had a six-month life expectancy. If a woman contracted a venereal disease or any other ailment, the Nazis sent her to a nearby hospital for treatment. In fact, they never returned because they were either shot or sent to the gas chambers. Most concentration camp sex slaves perished from illness, murder, suicide, or pregnancy-related complications. Kristina Ziwulska, a Polish survivor of Auschwitz, describes how the women in the concentration camp brothels were recruited for work in the brothels. According to her account, the prisoner overseer and a guard entered her quarters at night and moved from one bunk to the next. The female guard shouted, who wants to go to Auschwitz, to the town, to the men's camp? There's easy work, civilian clothing, and good food. She gave an evil and deceitful smile. Well, where are the volunteers? Many captives would have done anything to escape the hell of the concentration camps and their impending deaths. In her novel, Smoke Over Birkenem, the Italian author Liana Milu describes a sex slave who said, Well, I refused to be consumed and vanish like a cloud. I wanted to return to my house. I'm 18 years old. I don't want to die. Everyone in the lager goes around picking up leftovers from the garbage. They suck bones other people spit out. And I'm supposed to refuse life because it's offered on a dirty plate. Women who fell pregnant had forced abortions, sterilizations, and medical experiments performed on them. Belia Harbis, a Holocaust survivor from the Burshad camp in the Vinitsia Oblast, recalled that women in the camp had formaldehyde solution injected in utero, which caused intense agony and hemorrhaging. Getting first-hand accounts of this horrific period of history is nearly impossible. Survivors didn't talk about anything having to do with sex because they didn't want their children and grandchildren to know what had happened to them, said Beverly Chalmers, author of Birth, Sex and Abuse, Women's Voices Under Nazi Rule. Another reason for the lack of first-hand accounts is that most, if not all, of the women were executed after they were of no use in the brothels. Was justice ever served out on the monsters who forced these women into sexual servitude? The Czechoslovak resistance assassinated Reinhard Heydrich in a coordinated operation during World War II. The assassination, codenamed Operation Anthropoid, was carried out on the 27th of May, 1942. Heydrich was injured during the operation and died on the 4th of June, 1942. Heinrich Himmler, Reichsführer of the SS, was responsible for the establishment of brothels in the concentration camps. Like his Führer, he committed suicide before being prosecuted. Franz Hossler was a member of the SS Deathhead Unit at Auschwitz-Birkenau, Dora Mittelbau, and Bergen-Belsen. Hossler actively sent women to brothels in the concentration camps. Captured by the Allies after World War II, Hossler was tried for war crimes in the first Bergen-Belsen trial, found guilty and sentenced to death. In 1945, he was executed by hanging at Hamlin Prison. The sexual violations and dehumanization of the women caught up in this state-sponsored sex slavery operation have stayed in the shadows of what is seen as more severe atrocities during World War II. Hopefully, more survivors will tell us their stories as a cautionary tale of the horrors that women suffer during war.